Hey, this is Justin from BreakingTheCRE.com, and in today's video, what we're gonna do is break down what the commercial real estate interview process actually looks like when you're applying for a job in the commercial real estate field. So if you're looking to land your first or next job in the commercial real estate industry and want to know what to expect during the process, definitely stick around for this video. Now on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate financial analysis. So if you're looking to break into commercial real estate for the first time, or you're looking to advance your current real estate career, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. So I'm gonna start this video off with the caveat that every company and every location does things a little bit differently. But through my own experiences and the experiences that my students have shared with me, I've noticed some really clear patterns that you're likely to see when you go into the commercial real estate interview process. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is really break down that process into four specific steps that you're likely to see when you go into the commercial real estate interview process. So this is gonna be really helpful if you're trying to understand how long the process might take, what to expect, and what to prepare for when you're headed into interview day. So as I mentioned, commercial real estate interviews generally have about four different phases, and this is definitely going to vary based on the size of the company that you're interviewing with, the existing relationship that you have with the company, and the responsibility level of the role that you're applying for. But usually what you'll find is this process is going to start with phase number one, and that's going to be an initial screening call either with a recruiter or an HR person within the company itself. So this call is usually just to confirm what that person has either seen on your resume or on your LinkedIn profile, and to give you a little bit more background on what the role might be. This is also a great opportunity for that person to understand a little bit more about your background and your personality type when you're able to talk one-on-one -on, -one on the phone. Now, most of the time, the person that you talk to in this preliminary phase isn't going to be the main decision maker on the role which means that the conversation is likely just going to be a general overview of your background and a general overview of the role in general, rather than asking complicated and technical questions like you might be expected to be asked later on in the interview process. Now, once you've passed this phase and you've talked to this person and that person has passed you on to the next level of the interview process, generally this second step is going to be some sort of a phone interview with someone a little bit closer to that team or specifically the hiring manager that you're going to be working for. Now this conversation is going to be much more of an interview on your specific experience. So it's likely that this person is a lot closer to the role that you're actually going to be playing and they're going to wanna to know your specific experience and how you can add value to that team. So for a bigger company, this might be talking to an associate or an acquisitions manager. And for a smaller, more entrepreneurial type company, you may be talking directly to the hiring manager in this step specifically. In short, this part of the interview process is very much a what have you done and what can you do for us type of conversation. So make sure that you can tell your story in a compelling way and why you'd wanna be a part of that team and how you can add value to that team from day one. Now from there, assuming this conversation goes well, you'll usually move on to phase number three, which is going to be an in-person interview at the company's office. Now usually this is a long drawn out process where you're going to meet several different people, likely for 30 to 45 minutes at a time. In commercial real estate, you're often going to find that you're going to meet with five to eight different people in a single day. And usually these are going to be one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one type meetings. Now many of these interviews are going to be focused on your experience and your background, but a big part of this step of the process is knowing if you're going to be a good personality fit for the company and the specific role that they're hiring for. So the reason why you'll meet so many different people is because these people are going to come together and weigh in on who is the best candidate, especially if they are interviewing multiple people. And again, just like everyone else, these people are busy and they're not going to bring someone in for an in-person interview and have several people spend 30 to 45 minutes of their day interviewing them if they weren't serious about you and didn't think that you had the experience and the technical skill set to be able to be a solid candidate for the role. Now, some bigger private equity companies might even refer to this as a super day for incoming analysts or associates out of undergrad or an MBA program. So if you hear that you have a super day coming up, this may be something like what you'll see. Now, sometimes phase number three is the last step and you're going to have a decision on whether you got the job or not one to two weeks after that process has been finished. 
That said, many companies in the commercial real estate space will move you on to step number four, which is going to be a real estate financial modeling interview exam in Excel. Now, generally what this is going to look like is a timed exam anywhere from about one to three hours. And usually you're going to get some sort of assumptions. You may get a case study and you're going to have to build out some sort of a financial model based on those assumptions or that case study. You may also get individual questions that will test your knowledge on specific Excel functions, specific finance functions, and then specific real estate finance related functions that you'd end up using on the job as an analyst or an associate at that firm. Now this can be one of the most stressful parts of the entire interview process. And the last thing you wanna do is go through weeks of an interview process leading up to this and then bomb the real estate financial modeling interview exam. So when people ask me what they can do to actually prepare for an exam like this, I put together a course that really walks you step by step through what you might expect to see in a real estate financial modeling interview exam. And that course is called the real estate financial modeling interview exam guide. So if you have a real estate financial modeling interview exam coming up in Excel, make sure to check out that course. I'll link that in the description below. And if you want to make sure you have all bases covered to understand the technical skill sets that you need to land a job as a real estate analyst or associate at a top tier investment firm, I'd recommend checking out Break into CRE Academy as well. And that'll give you access to all Break into CRE courses, all models, and some additional one-on-one -on -one support. So I hope that was helpful. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribe to the channel and share this with anyone else who might find this helpful or might have a real estate interview coming up. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.